Good morning, everyone. This is Rome Wilkerson with Houston Professional Photography. If you're new to the channel or you're new to these lives, welcome. So I've reactivated the texture layer, but I still have the black and white helper layer on here. So what this is going to still allow me to do is to go further in and make sure um, that everything is blended well. Yeah, I think when I switch between the monitors to go over to the iPad, for some reason it may have, um, I don't know, did some type of transition. <clears throat> so uh, let's turn off the helper layer. And we're going to turn off our frequency separation. And see, all I did was really just smooth out the skin and even out the skin tone. Like I said, if you do this right, you won't see a huge transition, a huge difference in the images. And that's the goal because, you know, we can go too far with this and we're going to lose all of the texture in the skin and everything is just going to look really, really blurry. But there's a number of different ways that you can bring the texture back if you need to. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do here really quick is just I'm going to clean up her eyes because, you know, we just want to brighten the eyes up just a little bit. And I usually use um, one of these really simple uh, actions for it. There's a number of different steps that you can take. Um, there's a ton of these actions. You can find them um, free online, you can uh, purchase them. It just depends on you know how far you want to go with it. The panels that I you know recommended before have a lot of these built-in features. Uh, let me show you guys real quick one of those panels. So, if for instance I wanted to um, just use one of the panels, uh, maybe the um, this um, Retouch Pro, I could use that to uh, whiten the eyes. So it has built-in um, actions, you know, because these are not anything special, they're just basically actions. So I'm going to first create a stamp layer so that I'm only working on a version of the image. So I want to whiten the eyes. So now it's created this um, folder above. And then I can just go here and I can start painting in over the eyes with a regular brush. So I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller. Now this is probably going to be, no, it's at 100%. Let's bring this down to maybe about 50. That's a good starting point. And then you can just start painting in. And I think I have the wrong brush selected. So let me check my brush. Yeah, so we just want to paint in just a little bit, just to whiten the eyes. And you're going to have to resize your brush as you go. Remember that the human eyes are not completely white. So you just want to lighten them. And, you know, in this situation, because this image is a low-resolution image to start with, you're going to see some graininess in the eyes and things like that. You can still fix some of it and then lower the opacity so it doesn't look, you know, so neon or so art artificial. So I still think that's too much. So I'm gonna bring that down to maybe about 30. Let's zoom out. So as you zoom in just a little bit, I'm gonna turn that on and off. still looks like it's maybe a little too much. So I'm bring it down to about 25. Yeah, that's good enough. But, you know, if you're using Photoshop or um, and you want to, you know, do it the easier way in the beginning, yes, one of these panels will be a very powerful tool for you. And, you know, with this panel, one of the things that it, it uh, leverages is AI. So I could go over here to Face 
as an example. Um, let me create another um, stamp layer here. Let me close this folder. And I want to create just another stamp layer so you guys can see um, some of the things that you can do with this filter. So if we go to eyes, we can make the eyes larger. I don't know how well that's going to translate to the video, but you guys should see that. So if I turn these off and back on. Now, how often you'll need that, it, it may vary. You know, in some situations, you'll need something like that because um, one, you know, depending on the angle of the camera, uh, the perspective of the lens, you know, can make one eye look larger than the other, depending on how close that person is to that, you know, the, 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 that portion of the lens. So you may want to, you know, increase the, you know, the size of the eyes or something like that. Um, the next thing it has is like a nose adjustment. You can adjust the width of the nose. You can make the nose wider or you can make it smaller. You know, so like that would make it smaller. And then, you know, by making it wider, I'm just bringing it back to it where it was originally. And then if we go to the mouth, we can adjust the upper lip and the bottom lip separately. We can adjust the smile, which we can make our, it looks like she's smiling more or smiling less. So if we go to smile more, then let's say we want to make the upper lip a little bit larger. We got that, and then bottom lip looks okay. If we wanted to increase the mouth width, you could do all those things from this panel. Now, personally, most of these I would not use myself. Um, if I was going to do some of these things, I'd probably do it in Liquify. So I'm going to take and get rid of all those. But, you know, they are, these things are available to you within the panel. That's all I'm saying. And then you can also adjust um, the shape of the face. A lot of what you see this panel doing is no different than what you'd be able to do in um, your Liquify panel built into Photoshop. So these panels don't add any new software. It doesn't really add anything special other than it brings all of the different features to Photoshop into one um, panel that you can just click on whatever it is you need. And it has a few presets. It has some um, uh, split toning. It has some color filters. You know, it has a number of different things that are built into it. But most people are going to utilize it for... Um, for the, you know, the hair, the eyes, the, the skin tone, stuff like that. You do have here a very easy way to airbrush the skin. Um, you have a very, you know, you have your frequency separation. You can also add texture if texture is missing. So for instance, on this uh, stamp layer, if I click on the easy mode, what it'll do is it will create a mask. You're going to be painting on, you know, make sure your, 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 um, your brush color is going to be white, soft round brush. You know, pick a brush based on the size that you want to paint from. I'm going to move this over a little bit so you guys can see. And then you just literally just start painting over the skin. And it just starts to soften the skin. Now, like I said, with anything, you know, you have to use your own judgment as to what's going to work. I'm not a fan of a lot of this anymore. I used to do this back in the day because one, I didn't know any better and the technology really wasn't there. But you know, as we learn, we grow. And, but I'm still showing you that you can do this. Now I'm sure I'm gonna get a bunch of, like I did the other day, a bunch of um, messages from retouchers. Stop showing this panel. <laughs> And then you'll watch some of their videos and find out they're using these exact same panels, you know. But it's one of the secrets. So even with that, where I would say that's, you know, way too much, you can still come in here and you can adjust the opacity and start to bring back some of the texture. So you can still see, let me close this panel. 
So you can still see the difference. If I turn it off, back on, and off, and on. So where you'd want, you know, here on her cheeks, where there's, you know, really good um, contouring, you could always still paint that back in by just changing your brush color from white to black. And then you could go over that with your brush and just start to bring that back if you wanted to, you know. But the problem with that is you're also bringing back additional texture that this has removed. So it may not match up well. So if you see that it looks um, really textured right there at that one spot that I painted that into. So what I would do or suggest if you were gonna go that route is to just dodge and burn on top of um, where that, that area is. So I would just switch that back to white then paint back over it so that it's consistent to whatever you painted on before. And then you could just, you know, create another stamp layer and then obviously you could go in and, uh, you know, dodge and burn wherever you want to. Now you can still use this on every part of the body. So you can, you know, use it on the hands, if there were feet, legs, any part of the body you could still use this just to soften the skin a little bit if that's the look you're going for. For most portraits, you know, this is going to work. Um, for high school, for um, executive portraits and things like that. You won't, don't want to take it to 100%, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's going to give you the look that most people ideally want for their portraits, right? So, you know, even with that, we just go ahead and just create another stamp layer. And then if you now want to run, um, you know, like some kind of dodge and burn or something like that, you can do that. And then that'll just contour the image a little bit better. So if you want to burn a certain area, you know, just go in there and find those areas that you want to be a little bit darker. I'm using a heavy brush, but you get the idea. Um, let's just say that's what we want. Then we could just come in and feather this to about where we want it. Just where it pops, just a little bit. So about there. And then with your dodge, you know, you could always just pick little highlight areas. Bridge of the nose, right here under the eye, just a little bit, right here on her chin. And all I'm doing is following where I see highlights already. And then the same thing. So if we turn that off and back on, you see how it adds a lot of light and shape to the face. But like in anything, you know, use this at your own discretion. You know what your style is. You know, you'll know what your clients are looking for. So, you know, if we go all the way back, that's before, that's after, you know. So we could go in, we could, you know, readjust Little things, you know, you can go and liquefy and you can adjust the, you know, the chin here, the shape of the jaw just a little bit, just enough to correct something that you may not have been able to control during the actual shoot. That's what you're trying to do here. Um, but I don't recommend, you know, doing full body modifications or facial modifications or something like that. What I'm saying is if there's some little, you know, things that, you know, you know what the person looked like while you're photographing them. And you're like, and, you, and a lot of times in, when we photograph people, we know that they're going to get nervous. And we know that there's going to be some um, hesitance, you know, during the photo shoot. Even people who have been photographed many times before, you know, will tell you. Even celebrities, you know, they, they, they freak out sometimes, you know, when they're being photographed again. So, you know, these little things are almost expected for you to be able to go in and clean up the skin, you know, lighten the eyes, whiten the teeth readjust things, remove things that shouldn't be in the photo, you know, whether it's dandruff or, you know, something on the clothing, you know, that's all going to be a part of your retouching. So hopefully, you know, you guys learned something today. Um, this coming week, we will be moving on to something else. So I wanted to really, really, really focus on 
The frequency separation on the simplified version of dodging and burning. So then when we start to uh, look at uh, different techniques for creating more artistic or fantasy based images, you guys will have this under your belt because the dodging and burning will apply, you know, in some of these other, you know, types of images that we'll be working on, you know, in the near future. So if you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments or hit me up on any of the social medias, you know, just send me a message. And if I can answer that question for you, I would be more than happy to. Um, I think that's about it, guys. Uh, what I do want to do, and I was thinking about this, uh, talking to someone, another photographer about this the other day. If you have photos you would like us to edit live on one of these um, lives, you can submit them to us. And then, um, you know, I can edit them live. You can be a party to the live. And, you know, you can give suggestions. Say, hey, could you do this or could you do that? And the reason why we're doing that is that this is what most photographers, new photographers experience from their clients. But you'll see it in real time from someone that um, is providing an image that you didn't capture. But yet, even though you don't capture these images, you will get clients that will contact you and say, hey, I really would like it if it's possible for you to do this, or can you fix this, or you know, I need this for a LinkedIn profile, or I need it for a Facebook or a dating app or whatever it is. Can you clean the image up? Well, this image right now is... Uh, 134 megs from all the stuff that's combined, you know, here in Photoshop. But if we look at the original image and we look at what the size of this original image was, <clears throat> this original image was only 1.5 megs. But once you start adding all of these layers and things in Photoshop, um, it's going to increase the size of the image tremendously. But you're not going to be delivering, obviously, you know, um, 130 megabyte image to a client. You're going to be delivering them still a JPEG version of this, unless they, for some reason, want a TIFF or something like that or a DNG. But most people are just happy with uh, high resolution um, JPEG. And then the only other thing I would probably do at the very end here uh, for this type of portrait is that I would probably run uh, some type of sharpening. Um, uh, action or there's you know you can do this you know by hand you know the the step by step way but there are a number of sharp smart sharpening uh, actions and I'm just gonna run one here and you guys can get the idea of what I'm talking about so this is coming in right now at 2.9 that's still way too high so I'm gonna bring that down to maybe about a 1.3 and I don't know how well this is gonna translate onto um, this live, but I'm, I'll, I'll post this image so you guys can get a better look at it. Now, this is way too much, I still think, you know, even at the 1.5, but you still have control of your opacity. So you can still bring that down, you know, where you can still see really good texture in the skin without, you know, making the person look really, you know, crispy or something like that. So I think that works. Let's do a fit to screen. All right, guys, so <clears throat> I will be live tomorrow on um, Instagram, on my main Instagram page. And I have a number of images that I've already um, called for that um, live. So if you guys want to watch that, you know, feel free to follow me on Instagram. Um, if not, I will be back here on Friday on Facebook. But possibly later tonight because I got some friends that want to, you know, play around with um, Clubhouse and some other things uh, once I'm finished with all the, you know, my business related stuff today. I may be back on later tonight and we'll do something there, you know, and you guys can be live in the, the rooms and you can ask questions and, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'll probably, you know, still do some live editing and, you know, again, that'll be another opportunity if you have a, you know, three, four, five mega you know, image that, you know, you maybe want us to um, try to edit, you know, I'll, I'll give it a shot, you know what I'm saying? So we'll see how that goes. Well, I'm going to go ahead and save this image as a save as copy. 
as a JPEG, so then that way um, I'll be able to upload this for you guys to see on the in Facebook page and possibly on Instagram as well. So where do I want to drop this? Yeah, that's good enough. And let's see what a preview tells us. So this image is going to be 3.4 megs. And then I'm sure once I upload it to Facebook, it'll actually be smaller than that, you know, because of Facebook's compression and all that kind of stuff. But again, guys, hopefully you learned something. And, uh, you know, these lives are teaching you, you know, some basics that you'll be able to use in your workflow. And as long as you guys are happy with it, I'll keep doing these lives going forward. So I will catch you guys in the next live. So until then, see you guys tomorrow on Instagram. All right, I'm out of here. Have a good day. Peace.